Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on for current calculation. This is tutorial three. Now, uh, we have done a number of tutorial on pay unit system. We are following up on new series of tutorial on for current calculation, which is basically a continuation of the pay unit system. Cause you cannot do a uh, for current uh, calculation without doing your per unit because you need to reduce your electrical network into a per unit equivalent circuit and from there you can do your full finding so if you haven't yet subscribed to simtech channel please do it now there is so much more to gain from simtech channel as you go through your electrical engineering learning program okay so without further delay let's dive into this tutorial now in this tutorial we are told to find the short circuit current okay and the sc short circuit mva mva stand for mega volt ampere okay so that's the apparent power in the system as shown okay from a symmetrical three phase short circuit at f1 and f2 so as we can see we have a fault here so that's f1 and that's f2 so we got two faults okay that possibly occurring in this small network now we need to determine the short circuit current at this point f1 and the short circuit mva at the same point and also do exactly the same at point f2 of our network okay now before you do anything as we've said before you need to convert the following circuit into a per unit network circuit an equivalent impedance circuit okay in per unit which is a percentage form and from there you can then move forward now this is uh, a representation of electrical component as you can see that's a generator that's a transformer that's a reactance which could be a representation of a cable and so forth and so forth now this can be also represented in an elevated visual representation of how a network so basically the generator point can be uh an, can be a synchronous generator generating electricity and we can have a transformer which will act as a step up transformer like this one here stepping up from 11 to 33 kilovolt and we have a transmission line okay that is transmitting our power and from there we have uh, a load that is attached we could also have another transformer at this point here to step down the very high voltage that was being transmitted so that we can have the equipment running at low voltage okay now let's go and solve the circuit for the full current that's are required from us now the solution will be first we calculate the per unit equivalent for each component if you've watched some of the per unit tutorial in this channel you will understand that there is a one general formula for the per unit which is given by z per unit new okay because remember we have a four percent here now this is considered an all per unit value of this transformer now remember we are working now on a new system so we are working in a different base okay so we need to calculate a new per unit value based on the new base that we are working on okay and so the z per unit old will be this one and this will be the sb new okay the new base that we're working and sb old will be the old apparent power of whatever equipment uh, component that you are calculating and vb all will be the old voltage of the system and vb new will be the new voltage of the system okay so go and watch the per unit tutorial to familiarize yourself with how to solve them and the, the use of this formula now now deducing from this formula we deduce that g1 will be equal to 0.2 j per unit I'd like to emphasize one important thing is uh, in this problem statement here they haven't specified what is the base apparent power 
that we must use or even the generator voltage but we assume that since this transformer here is operating at 11 kilovolt we assume that your generator is also supplying 11 kilovolt if there was a different voltage being supplied by the generator the problem statement would have specified it so if you see yourself in front of something like this then you need to assume that then you must assume that your generator is also supplying 11 kilovolt now as for the base apparent power you can choose anything so you can use a 20 mva as your base your new base 30 mva or 50 or 100 as the new base so long as you remain consistent with that base uh, uh, apparent power you're going to arrive at the same answer now solving for this per unit values we used a base of 20 mva but it doesn't matter which one you select okay so now moving forward we have t1 uh, gives that uh, a per unit value of 0, 0,02 j per unit and g2 which is the second generator we have a per unit of 0, 0,15 j per unit and t2 we have a per unit value of 0, 0,04 j per unit now the next thing to calculate here is the line we can see that there is a line here this is a cable so that is coming from t1 t2 okay it being joined here there is an intersection here and from here it's going all the way obviously there is a load there but we are talking here of a fault that arrive arise at this point here f2 so all of this is a line so that's a cable so we need to calculate the per unit of this line given that we have a z actual of the line is 2 ohm so that is a reactance so it's purely inductive uh, cable and calculating for that we know that the zone voltage for this area because we need to know the zone voltage in order to calculate the per unit of the line so the zone voltage is obviously 33 kilovolt because that is the output of both t1 and t2 if the output is different for either one of these transformer then there is a different formula that is used uh, to find the voltage of the zone again you can watch the per unit tutorial and see how we solve some of those problems okay now the z actual is equal to 2j okay that's a 2 ohm reactance and that is equal to 2 with an angle of 90 degree because it's a purely inductive cable and from there we need to deduce from the two main formulas that are used to calculate the z per unit of the line so that is the z per unit of the line that is given by z actual divided by zb and the second formula is zb and zb is given by the vb zone square divided by sb new and again sb new could be anything that you have chosen to calculate all these per unit values okay now moving forward zb is then equal to 33 that is a zone voltage square kilovolt square over the 20 mva that i told you that we selected for this system and that gives us an impedance okay of 54.45 ohm and from there we can then calculate the z per unit of the line that is two uh, that is z actual divided by zb and we find uh, z per unit okay of the line of 0, 0,0367 j okay now at this point what you've done now so far is you've converted this network here this network here into a per unit network an equivalent per unit impedance diagram so you then need to redraw your circuit and that will be just simply by replacing each one of these components with equivalent per unit that you've just calculated. So G1 will be represented by 0, 0,2 per unit and uh, G2, T1 and T2 as we've calculated. And your line will also be represented by the value that we've calculated there. Now you can see your fault are still at the same location where you need to determine your fault current and your fault mva 
Okay, so now you can see this is now becoming a simple electrical series parallel circuit. Why? Because we can see that the impedance, the per unit impedance of G1 and T1 are in series. Okay? And the per unit impedance of G2 and T2, they are not in series. Why? Because there is a fault here. Because if we choose to solve first for fault 1, we must understand that the current is going to flow from G2, okay, from G2 down to the fault. That's the direction of the current. It's a short circuit. So all the current is going to flow here through that side. And the current that will also going to be flowing from G1, which is also a generator, is going to pass through T1 transformer and it's going to come all the way like this down to the fault. Now remember, we are calculating now for fault at point F1. That means the load there is not going to receive anything because there is a load on this side. That's a load. It's not going to receive anything. So which means all our current are going to flow like this now. If you reconfigure this circuit, what do you have? You have G1, T1, and T2 all in series and they will be in parallel with G2. Now reconstructing the circuit would give us, okay, so we have G2. That is a 0, 0,15 per unit of uh, generator 2. And then we have a combination of G1, T1, T2 that is now uh, combined into a single per unit value because they are all in series, so we just add them up. Now we can see that the forces, the current that is flowing from this side to the current flowing from this point here to the fault are all in parallel, the impedances. So we then need to calculate this parallel combination of G2 over this 2. So calculating the total uh, per unit of the two parallel components will then yield to the following uh, equation. So Z per unit total will be Z per unit of G2, okay, in parallel with Z per unit T1, T2, and G1 as we've said. And all you have to do now here is to replace the values and calculate your simple parallel equation. Okay, so that yield you a value of Z per unit total of 0, 0,095J per unit. Now from here, you know what will be the next thing. You then need to calculate your short circuit current, okay, and your required short circuit MVA. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop this tutorial here before it gets too long. Now, in the next tutorial, part two, we're going to continue. Since we've already reduced the circuit into a per unit equivalent, and we've even calculated the Z per unit total for fault one. So the next tutorial, we're just going to calculate the actual fault current for F1 and if, uh, the, the, the apparent power for F1. And from there, we can then reconstruct our circuit to look for a fault at F2. Because now the fault current will be finding a new direction. It's no longer going to be flowing to fault 1 here. Now the fault current are going to flow like this. To J uh, to F2. Like that. So automatically we're going to have a different uh, total Z per unit. So stay tuned for the next tutorial. Again, if you like this tutorial, you find it uh, useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That will be highly appreciated. I thank you. Cheers.